let me show you the video that you're supposed to have watched. So you go to the you go to the course website and go down to week eleven. Um, all right, there's there's only one video you had to watch. This this one here, all right? It's basically a video with nine examples, right? So this is. I hope you guys watch this video. Um, okay, I hope you guys watch this video. Okay, so yes. Uh... Hello. Um, so what I'm going to do is to go through the nine examples briefly and ask you if you have any questions, and then I will do additional examples uh, in this session. All right. And of course, you, any questions, I'm sure you guys have questions. Uh, uh, please use the chat room as usual, okay? All right, so let me let me change the camera. To this, right? Hope you can see this, right? Okay, now these are the nine. So this is example one I did in the video that I showed you, uh, I asked you guys to watch. Do you have any questions on this example one? This is example two, I did. If you have any questions on any of the nine examples, please, please uh, give a shout, okay? This is example three. This is example four, I did. And, um, and this is the next one. This, this is example five in the, in the video. And uh, this is example six in the video. And this, it has two pages, right? And uh, this is example seven, right? And uh, and this is example eight I did in the video. And finally, this is example nine. So I did nine examples in the video. Do you, do you want me to go through any of the nine examples? I mean, is there any, any, not, any of those examples that you did not understand? Please let me know. Okay, seven, okay. All right, let me go through seven. Robert is asking to, to go through. But uh, this is uh, example example seven, right? So here you are testing this versus this with alpha 0.05 and equal to 35. The question is to find beta, right? So uh, beta, remember, is the probability of type two error. So it's the probability of accepting when H one is true. Now, if you look at the if you look at the formula sheet I gave you in the past last week, let me show you. I think I've got it here somewhere. If you look at the, the, the formula. This is testing for this population standard deviation, right? And if you look, if you're looking for something like this, the the rejection rule is this. This is the rejection rule when you are testing for sigma equal to something versus sigma greater than something. So this is the rejection rule that you should be using, All right? So hence, the probability of accepting, which is the opposite of rejecting, right? Should be, instead of being greater than, it should be less than or equal to, right? So this is the rule for rejection. And so the probability, the, 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 ac the acceptance will be less than or equal to, right? That's what you have here, right? And then I have rewritten this, this one as this um, and like this, right? Because the reason I have done this, the reason I have done this is because I wanted to use, I, I wanted to use a, a property. Yeah. You guys okay? I, I wanted to use a property that I talked about in the class. Do you, do you guys remember that a property I mentioned uh, earlier in the class is something like this, n minus one times s squared divided by sigma squared 
as a chi-square distribution with n minus one degree of freedom. This is this is if you if you look back in the property, if you look at if you look at the video on chi-square distribution, this is a property that I mentioned in that video. Um, I don't know whether you if, if you can't recall it, please please have a look at the video on chi-square, right? So that's exactly why I introduced this term here. N minus one is 34 times S squared divided by sigma squared, all right? Then I took this factor here to the right-hand side. And because of this property, because of this property, you can say that this has the chi-square distribution with 34 degree of freedom, right? Okay, all right, so, and finally, this is the notation I have for the CDF of a chi squared with 34 at this value. Right. Is, is this clear, Robert? Robert, are you okay with this? Yeah, I mean, the, the property I have used to, to go from this line to this line is this property, Robert. This is a property I talked about in the video on chi-square. So if you don't remember it, uh, Robert, please, Please go and have a look at this, the video on the chi squared. You will see this property. Okay, so that's example seven. Um, now, example eight, somebody also asked me to go through example eight, which is this one. Is it somebody did ask me for that too? Let me see. Who asked for example eight? Somebody asked me for the last step. Okay, okay. So, here you have a geometric random variable and you're testing for this versus this and the rejection happens when X is less than equal to five. five. And the question is to find alpha and beta, right? And to find alpha is the probability of type one error, which is the probability of rejecting when H zero is true, right? So it's the probability that X is less than equal to five when P is 0 0.1. And this probability you can write as the sum of the probabilities x equal to i for i from one to five. Yeah. And now this, this is the, the, the probability mass function of a geometric random variable. Remember, I'm sure you've done this in, in probability one last semester. The PMF, the PMF of a geometric variable is, is, is P times one minus P to the power I minus one. Do you guys, do you guys remember this or not? This, this is, the, this is the, the probability mass function of or the PMF of a, of a geometric variable, right? Okay, so that's what I have used to go from this line to this line. I, I just put P equal to 0 0.1 because we are conditioning, we are conditioning on P being equal to 0 0.1. Okay, so, so I just used the formula for the PMF of a geometric variable with P equal to 0 0.1. Okay. And the same thing with type two error. Type two error is the probability of accepting when H1 is true. So probability that X is greater than five when P is 0 0.2, which you can write as one minus this. And the probability that X is less than equal to five can be written as this. And finally, to go from this line to, to, to this line, right? I have used once again, the, the probability mass function of the geometric variables so with P equal to 0 0.2, right? So if you put P equal to 0 0.2 into this formula, you get 0 0.2 times one minus 0 0.2 to the power I minus one. But why don't we use any formula? What do you mean formula? I mean, in this case, in this case, Cheng, I mean, the rejection rule is already given, my friend, all right? So you don't need to use any formula, right? So because the question, or the question gives you the rejection rule. So you don't need to use any formula from the norms, right? I mean, if the question gives you the formula for the rejection rule, then there's no need to use uh, any formula from the nodes, okay? Any other questions, guys? So, so I think you guys asked me to go through question, sorry, example seven and eight, and I have done that. Any other example you like me to go over, please let me know. So I did in the in the video. I asked 
uh, you guys to watch. I did nine examples, right? Is there any other example you'd like me to go over which was not clear? Hello, guys. Hello. Are you okay with all the nine exam all the other examples? Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do in the remaining part of this review session is to I'm going to do some more examples. So I will start with example ten. I hope you can see this. If you cannot see this, let me know. Um, okay. This is example ten, which says that you have a random sample from a normal with these parameters. Consider testing this versus this. Reject H0 if X bar is K greater than constant K and find alpha and beta. So right, let's start with alpha. The so alpha is the probability of type, type one error, right? Okay, so this is the probability of rejecting, rejecting H0 when H0 is true. Right? So this is the probability that X bar is greater than K when mu is equal to zero. Okay. All right, guys. Um, so this becomes the probability that, okay, now I'm gonna standardize this. You see what I'm doing now. I'm gonna subtract the mean and divide by one over root of n. I'm gonna do that both sides. Do you, do you see why I'm doing this? Do, 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 do you know why I'm doing this? Because the reason I'm doing this is because of the following result. If, if you have a random sample, uh, which are I, that is IID with normal, with these parameters, right? Then you know the result. I think I mentioned this many times before in the class. You know this result, right? This is, uh, this is the result I mentioned several times in, in the class before. So, so what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do guys is that in this line here, I'm trying to subtract mu, which is zero, right? And divide by sigma by root, sigma is one because sigma squared is one, right? All right, so the, the right-hand side, sorry, sorry, the left-hand side becomes a standard normal variable, right? And this guy here becomes root of n times k. And this you can write as one minus the probability that n zero one is less than or equal to root of n times k, right? And this is one minus phi at root of n times k. All right. So this is the this is the the probability that of type one error. Okay, is this, is this okay with all of you or no? Before I go ahead. Hello guys, talk to me. Are you everybody okay? All right. Okay, now the, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to find beta. Remember beta is the probability of, beta is the probability of type two error. So beta is the probability of type type two error, right? Which is the probability of accepting, accepting the null hypothesis when H1, H1 is true. Right, now this is the rule for rejecting. So accepting will be the reverse, will be the reverse of rejecting. So it will be less than or equal to K. And H0 is true if mu is equal to one. You follow what I'm doing, right? This is the opposite of rejecting, right? We reject when X bar is greater than K. So we accept if X bar is less than or equal to K. 
okay right okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the same standardization so i'm going to subtract the mean which is mu and divide by one over root of n which is sigma by root of n right do you see why i'm doing this because of the same thing that i did in the previous case right now because of the same argument right as in the previous case this guy here has the sorry has the standard normal distribution right less than or equal to root of n times a minus one right and this is equal to phi at root of n times k minus one. So this is the value for bit. Okay, guys. So this answers example 10. Is, it, is there anything that is not clear to you in, in this example? Hello, guys, talk to me. everything okay okay thank you so just on example 10 if it, i mean if it's if it's not clear just feel free to say so okay all right now the next example i'm going to look at is example 11 so here we have the same situation we have a random sample from this right and we are testing this versus this and the rejection rule here is is the absolute one you have to be very careful when you have an absolute value the absolute value of x bar is greater than k. And the question is again, find alpha and beta. So alpha is the probability of type one. It's a type one error, right? Which is the probability of rejecting H zero when H zero is true. Okay, All right? And, um, and this is the probability that x bar is greater than k when mu is equal to zero. Now, I don't know whether you know, I mean, I'm sure you must have done this before somewhere. Do, do you know that if, if you say like the absolute value of z is greater than k, this is the same as saying that z is greater than k or z is less than minus k. I'm sure I'm sure you know this right from, from your math courses that you have, excuse me, from the math courses you have taken. Right? Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use this result. All right, I'm gonna write the above as the probability that x bar is greater than k, or x bar is less than minus k. Right? You you follow me? Yeah. Okay. Now these two events are mutually exclusive, so you can write them as the sum. So this is because the, of the fact that the, these two events, these two events are mutually exclusive. In other words, they cannot occur together, so, right? Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna standardize. So to standardize, I'm gonna subtract the mean, which is the population mean, which is zero, and divide by sigma by root of n. So I do that both sides. Yeah, and also do that to the, the second probability. So you get okay, like this, right? 
All right, so the first term, because of the argument that I made earlier with example 10, this must have the standard normal condition on this. And this two also have, should have the standard normal condition on this. So what you have is the probability that N01 is greater than root of N times K plus the probability that N01 is less than minus root of n times k. Yeah, are you with me so far or no? If there's anything not clear, please please use the chat room, okay? I'm happy to help as always. Okay, so, so this, the first probability you can write it as one minus the probability that right? And the second probability, I'm not going to change. I'm going to leave it like this. Okay. All right. Are you okay so far? I think the, there's blurring, I think, but let me check the camera. Oh, sorry, man. I know I should, every time I touch a camera, it's, it goes crazy. Okay, all right, now, so finally, finally this becomes one minus phi at root of n k, and this becomes plus phi minus root of n k. Okay, so this completes, um, yeah, k, yeah, k must be strictly positive, yes, Callum, because, because you're comparing Absolute, but absolute value of anything must be positive, as you know. So K is strictly positive, yes. So this is the answer to the probability of type one error. Right. Are you guys okay with this or no? Let me know if you're not okay. I'm happy to go over. Okay. I'm happy to go over anything you like, okay? So this, okay, now the next thing we need to do is to find the probability of type Type two error. Um, yes, you can, John. Yeah, you can simplify it too. Yes, you're right. You're right, John. Yeah, you're right. You can simplify further. Yes. Um, but I, I bet I just I would like I just leave it like that. Okay, if that is okay with you. Uh, okay. Right. So the next thing I'm going to do. Uh, guys is to find the probability of type two error. So that is better. So this is the probability of uh, accepting the null hypothesis when, when H1 is true. Right, so now, if you, if you look back on the question, this is the rule for rejecting the null hypothesis. So the rule for accepting will be the absolute, the absolute value of X bar less than or equal to K. And H1 is true if mu is not equal to zero. Okay. All right, guys. Um, somebody waiting. All right. Now, I'm sure you know that Man, sorry, he's playing around. Yeah. All right, I'm sure you know from uh, from your the stuff that you've done so far that that this being less than equal to, less than equal to k This being less than or equal to K is the same as saying that okay, it's the same as saying this, okay? Just 
Excuse me, I think the computer is playing again. Excuse me. Okay, all right. The next thing I'm gonna do, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna standardize X bar. Okay, so in order to standardize X bar, I subtract the mean, which is mu, right? The population mean and divide by sigma by root of n, right? Okay, so I do that on all sides. So I need to do that with, like this, okay? Now, by the argument that I mentioned earlier, by the argument that I mentioned earlier, right, that is, this guy here must have the standard normal distribution, right? So what you have is that this is the same as the probability that Same as this probability, right? And this you can write. Just give me a sec, guys. I think that this you can write as the difference of these probabilities that Right, and finally, finally, this this is uh, this is the CDF of N O one, so this is phi at k minus mu uh, times root of n. Yeah, and this guy, and this guy here, you can write as capital phi uh, times minus root of n k plus k plus mu okay so this completes uh, the solutions to data right okay is that are you guys okay with this or, or no hello any questions why did the the the, the condition vincent yeah Vincent, the, the condition disappeared because we made use of it, as Mikhail said. Like from, from this line to this line, we made use of the fact. This computer is still playing. Just a minute. Give me a sec, guys. Um, Okay, from, from Vincent, from this line to this line, we have made use of the fact that that condition on the population mean not being equal to zero, this has the standard normal distribution. So we have, we have made use of the conditioning, right? Okay, we have made use of the conditioning. So, so we, So we have um, we 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 have made of use of the conditioning from this line to this line. So hence it's not it's not it's no longer it's the same if mu is equal to zero. But in this case, we don't know what mu is, so we have to keep it as mu because it only says that mu is not equal to zero, which could mean essentially any value for mu, right? It could mean any possible value for mu. So, um, so, so we have to leave it as mu. We cannot replace mu by zero or anything. All right. So we have to keep it as mu and then write this as the difference. And finally, this statement. Right. Okay. Any other questions, guys? This computer is still playing around. I don't know why.
Any other questions on example 11? Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. So let me go to example 12 now. Example 12 is this one. So we have a random sample from a normal with these parameters, testing this versus this, and the rule for rejecting, the rule for rejecting is this one, right? The question is to find alpha and beta. So let's start with alpha first. Alpha is the probability of type one error, okay? which is the probability uh, of rejecting H0 when H0 is true. Right? Now, it's the probability of S squared. S squared, remember, is a sample variance greater than K. H0 is true if sigma squared is one. Right? Okay, now I'm gonna use the property that I mentioned earlier uh, uh, which is this, I'm gonna multiply n minus one. Uh, I'm gonna multiply the left-hand side by n minus one and divide by sigma squared. I'm gonna do the same thing on the right-hand side. You will see why I'm doing this. Okay. Right, now we know that sigma squared is one, right? Okay, so now, okay, before I say that, before I say that, let me, let me say this. This guy here, because of the property that I mentioned in the video on the chi-square, I don't know whether you guys remember this property, but if you don't, please, please go and have a look at the video on the chi-square distribution. You will see, you will see that this has the chi-square distribution, this has the chi square distribution with n minus one degree of freedom, right? This is, this is the, sorry, Daphne, I'm sorry. Can you see the top now? Um, the computer, I mean, the computers keep blinking. I don't know why. It's always give me trouble. All right. Now this is um, n minus one times k. Now we know sigma squared is one, so we can ignore this because anything divided by one is itself, right? So this would be this, right? Okay, now this you can write as one minus the probability, one minus the probability that chi squared n minus one is less than or equal to n minus one times k, right? Okay, so, so this becomes one minus the CDF of the chi squared with n minus one degree of freedom worked out at n minus one times times k. Okay, so this is this is the probability. What's happening? Okay, okay. So this. Sorry. So this is, oh, come on. Um, sorry, I, I still have problems with the computer. Don't know why. All right, so this is, So this is the probability that of, of alpha, alpha equals to one minus this. Is, is, is this okay with you guys or no? Hello guys, sorry, I'm having constant problems. Yeah, okay. All right, now the next thing is we need to find beta, right? Remember beta is the probability of type two error, right? Okay, so let me show you how to do that. Um, So, right. 
and this is the probability of accepting accepting H zero when H one is true. Right now, uh, this is the rule for rejecting. So accepting will be the opposite of that, which is S squared less than or equal to K. And H1 is true if sigma squared is not equal to one. Okay, all right. Now I'm gonna do the same thing I did earlier, which is I'm gonna multiply both sides by S squared. Sorry, N minus one, I mean, N minus one. Right, and divide by sigma squared. Right. Right now, using the the same uh, result I mentioned earlier, that this this guy here, according to the video I did earlier on the chi square distribution, must have a chi square distribution with n minus one degree of freedom. Okay, here we don't know the value for sigma squared because sigma squared is not equal to one, which means it can take possibly any value, right? So we have to do it like this. And finally, this will be, you can write this as the CDF of the chi squared with n minus one degree of freedom at right, so this is the this is the, the expression for the, yes, Vincent, it needs to be N minus one, Vincent. That's why I'm asking you to uh, please, if you don't remember this, Vincent, please go back and look at the video on the chi-square distribution. If you look at the video, it says explicitly, it, one of the properties I mentioned in that video is that this, this must have a chi-square distribution with N minus one degree of freedom. Okay, guys, yeah, All right, yeah. I'm sorry about the, 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 the Zoom. Zoom is, I mean, it's really annoying. I don't know why, what I can do. Nothing to do with my computer thing, but I think it's something to do with Zoom, I think, anyway. All right, okay, any questions on this? Uh, but, can't you multiply both? Yeah, you can. You can you can multiply by other stuff. But the thing is, you need to multiply by, by things that helps you. The reason, the reason I have multiplied by n minus one and divided by sigma squared, Vincent, is because I wanted to use the fact that this has the chi square distribution. So it doesn't help multiplying by other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because you need to multiply by stuff that will actually help you to answer the question. The, the reason I have done this multiplication is because I know that this has the chi-square distribution with n minus one degree of freedom, right? So it doesn't help to multiply both sides by other things other than this factor here, right? Okay. Okay, um, all right, any other questions, guys? Any other questions on the stuff I have done? Um, this is example 12 that I just completed, all right? The, the next example, the next example I'm gonna do, hopefully the computer will hold, not giving me trouble, is this one. So here you have a random sample from this, right? Okay, and, um, uh, you want to test whether mu equal to zero versus mu equal to one. And the rule for rejecting is this, right? X bar uh, divided by S, S is the st sample standard deviation greater than, greater than K, right? Okay. Um, right, so now you should, let's, let's try to find alpha. Alpha is the, I said before is the type one error. So this is the probability of rejecting H zero when H zero is true. Okay. 
So this is the, the probability that x bar divided by s is greater than k. k is a constant when mu equal to zero, right? Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the following. I'm gonna, I'm gonna divide this by, by root of n, which, okay, both sides. You, you will see why I'm doing this in a second. Yeah. Now, do you, do you guys remember a property about this? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you guys recognize this term or no? Yeah, exactly, hang, yeah. This, this term here has the T distribution. It's the T distribution with N minus one degree of freedom. Thank you, Hank. This, I mean, if you look back at, I mean, again, you need to remember these properties. I mean, if you look back on the video on the T, T random variable, the student T random variable, this is a property I mentioned that if you have something like this, that must have a T, is, is, it is a T random variable with N minus one degree of freedom, right? And this is, one, this you can write as one minus the probability like this, right? And finally, this you can write as capital F like this, okay? So this is the are you guys okay with this? So this is the expression for the type one error probability. Yeah. Okay, guys. All right, so type two also can be obtained in a similar way. So I'm not gonna do type two. So this is similar to this one, okay? I'm sure you can do it. You can do type two by yourself, right? Okay, so the next thing, so that's example 13. Now let me go to example 14 now, which is, which is this one. So if you have a random sample from this where sigma squared is unknown, testing this versus this, and yet the rejection rule is this, find alpha and beta. Again, I will only do alpha and ask you to do beta by yourself, right? So this is the probability of type one error, which is the probability of re rejecting the null hypothesis when H0 is true, right? And this is the probability of like this, yeah? Okay, now the first thing you must do is to get rid of the absolute sign, right? And think, as I mentioned earlier, okay, to get rid of the absolute sign, you say this, either without the absolute sign, it is either greater than K or, or is less than minus of K. Okay, right? You follow me? Now, because these two are mutually exclusive events, you can write them as the sum of the probabilities. So this is the sum of two different probabilities. One of them is, is this, right? And the other one is is this, right? Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the, the result I, I, I used in the previous example. So I'm gonna divide the denominator by root of n. So I do that on both sides. I know I'm run, running out of time. Just, just be with me, guys. I won't take too long. Right? 
Okay, now in the final step or the, the penultimate step, I'm gonna use the fact that this guy here has the T distribution. So this is the probability that a T random variable with N minus one is greater than greater than root of N times K, plus the probability that a T variable with N minus one degree of freedom is less than root of N times K. Are you following me guys or no? Right. And finally, you can write the first probability as one minus like this, yeah. And finally, the very last step, you can write it as the CDF, but this probability is the CDF of the T variable at root of N times K. And this probability here is the CDF of the T variable at minus root of N times K, right? So this, com this completes the solution for alpha and beta can be found similarly. Okay, guys. All right, so I've done 14 examples. I guess that's not too bad, I guess. I mean, it's not, um, why, when expanding the modulus, how come it isn't both bigger than? No, it's not. I mean, I, I mentioned to you, five to, I just mentioned to you a, a second ago that if you have something like this, my friend, if you have something like this, that's the same as saying that either Z is greater than K or Z is less than minus K. That's what I, I just mentioned to you. Uh, I, I just mentioned this to you, my friend, about a, about a few seconds ago, a few minutes ago, but this is the rule. I thought you know this from your, from your calculus course or whatever. Anyway, if you don't know this, just try to remember this. If you have something like absolute value of Z greater than K, that's the same as saying that Z is greater than K or Z is less than minus K, right? So that's what I have used for, to go from this line to, to this line. Okay, guys, any other questions? Um, if mu is not equal to zero, you cannot, you cannot use it. Um, so you have to find some other way to do it when, me, when, you, when you try to find it for beta, all right? All right, guys, have a, have a good evening wherever you are. And one, one final time, please. I know I've been sending you thousands of emails. So please, can you complete the UEQ, which, which you haven't done it? Uh, I would be really, really grateful. I mean, I have been trying to be as supportive as possible to you guys throughout this course. So I would really appreciate if you could kindly complete the UEQ, right? The first example, the first example on alpha. You mean which, which example do you mean, sir? Uh, anyway, I, I will post. Uh, the addition, sir. The addition is because these two are these two events are mutually exclusive. These two events are mutually exclusive. That's why, that's why I added these two, sir. Remember, if you have two mutually exclusive events, then the probability of their union is the sum of the probabilities. I, I'm sure you know that from probability one, uh, you, which you took last semester one, right? Okay, guys. The first example I did today. Uh, I'm trying to find it. Just a minute, my friend. Just a minute. Um, this. I'm just trying to find it. Give me a sec. Just give me a sec. Where is it? I'm trying to example example eleven. Example eleven. find it man i don't know why it is just a minute give me a sec man 
Ah, uh, it's this one. Yeah, this is example. This is the first the first example I did today. Is this one? Yeah, John. Sorry, sorry, John, for taking your time. But this is the first example. <coughs> I mean, I, I will I will post scanned versions of this in a minute to the course website, so you'll be able to see it in a few minutes time. Right? Okay. All right, guys. So have a have a great day. Have a great evening, wherever you are. And any questions on the course, please feel free to contact me twenty four seven by email, Skype, Zoom, or phone. You know my phone number is 0161-273-2941. Okay. John, there's a Exam there's an error on example nine. Let me check, John, just a minute. Can, can you stay online, just a minute? Example nine. Let, let me check, what, what is, which one is example nine? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out where is example nine, just a minute. Can you stay online, please? Oh yeah, I got example nine here. Yeah, what well, can can you can you tell me where the error is, John? Are, are you are you there, John? John, the last step. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The last step. Yeah, yeah. It should be n. Yeah, it should. Be, you're right. It should be n, not n squared. Yeah, you're right, my friend. Yeah, that's an error. Yeah, the, the, uh, yeah, that should be n. Not, uh, somebody pointed this to me a day ago. Yeah, it should be n, not n squared. I'm sorry about it, John. Yeah, thank you. The inverse what? The inverse of phi and also the bottom bondulous. What the, the, What do you mean the inverse of phi, man? This is inverse of phi, yeah. What about it, John? I don't, I don't follow you. The bottom of the modulus, there's no modulus here. Can I? The inverse of phi. Yeah, this is the inverse, the inverse phi function of the value beta, yeah. What about it? I don't. Do we need to convert? No, you don't need to. You don't need to know that, John. No, you don't need to know that. In the in the exam, it will. I don't think it will come. No, I, I'm sure it will not come. You don't. You don't need to know the inverse of phi in the exam. No. Any other? Any other? Okay. Thank you, John. Have a good evening. Oh, good afternoon, wherever you are. All right, guys, any other question, just feel free to contact me 24 seven by email, Skype, Zoom, or phone. Phone number, you know what it is, 0161-273-2941. Right. Take care, guys, okay? I'll, I'll talk to you shortly. <laughs>